Hello guys. Having learned about basic authentication and token bearer authentication in the tools such as Swagger as well as the Postman, it's time to try out the same in the rest assured. So let's get started with basic authentication in the rest assured. We are in the Swagger tool for the bookstore API and the API that we had authenticated was the bookstore version 1 books with the post method. What we had done in the postman tool was basically specify the request method along with the request URL, pass the basic authentication along with username and password. Adequately we had response received in our response section with the status and rest of the things. Something similar we are going to try out in the rest assured. So let's get started. We are in the Eclipse ID and I have created an authentication class under the request package. In this particular class, we will be writing the test to authenticate the user using basic authentication. The first step in this direction will be to basically create an authenticate user test. And thus, we begin by invoking the add test annotation and start writing the test method. We will do the necessary imports. The next step will be to mention the base URI we will be requiring for this particular test. Since we have previously used it several times, so I will simply switch to the next class or the previous class that we had used and copy it from there. So this is going to be our base URI bookstoretoolsqa.com. The consecutive step after mentioning the base URI is to specify the request. We have specified the way our request will be with the request variable. The next step will be to specify the credentials we need to pass to the request and thus we will mention that right now. Credentials is the variable names that are selected. The username for us is test and password is test at the rate 123. So let me specify that. Notice that the username and password are separated by a colon as we had mentioned in a previous tutorial. At this juncture, we need to pass these credentials in an encoded format into the request header. But before that, let us try to understand why are we going for encoding. The encoding is used in authentication because we do not want our data to be transmitted directly over the network. We use Base64 particularly because it transmits the data into textual form and send it in an easier form such as HTML form data. Also, we can rely on the same 64 characters in any encoding language that we use. And thus, we use Base64 for encoding. Now, coming to the second part. We can create the Base64 encoded string in various ways. One of them could be through a third party website or we can simply rely on the built-in Base64 class which will help us to encode to Base64. So let's use the inbuilt Base64 class. We begin by evoking the Base64 class. There are several methods under Base64 but currently we are interested in the encode Base64 method. What it does is that it returns a byte array which contains the Base64 characters in their UTF representation for the data that we want to encode into Base64. Thus we select it and we know that the credentials is the data that we want to encode. We will convert these credentials into its byte format and thus use the getBytes method to convert this particular credentials into a byte format. Having done that the return type of encode base 64 is a byte array and thus we need to store it into a byte array.
we will name the variable for byte array as encoded credentials to make things simpler for our understanding. So basically the data that is the credentials will get converted into its byte format and get encoded. Once they are encoded, they get stored into this encoded credentials variable that we have created which is in the form of a byte array. We have received this particular encoded credentials into its byte array format and before we pass it to the header, we need to convert it into string format. Thus, we will typecast it to a string format. We will copy the encoded credentials and paste it here. Thus the string representation of the encoded credentials is available to us to pass it into a request header. Our next step will be to pass this particular encoded credentials as string into a request header. We have the request object that has been created. And in this we pass the header along with the header name and header value. The first thing that we specify is the header name. In our case as we have seen in our previous tutorial the header name will be authorization while the header value will be basic plus the concatenated value of encoded credential which is in the string format. we are passing this particular encoded credential as string into the request header. To take a brief overview of what we have done so far, let us just compare the code we have written here in rest assured with the one in Postman. In the Postman, we have specified the basic authentication type along with the username and password as the credentials. Likewise, we have specified our credentials for username and password following that what we have done in postman in the headers is that we have specified the header name as authorization followed by the phrase basic and the encoded credentials for basic authentication something similar we have done over here where we have specified the request header with authorization as the header name followed by the word basic that is the phrase basic and then the encoded credentials which are passed as a string the next step what we had done was specify the request body in which we specified the user ID and the ISBN. Since we are trying to replicate if we will be able to send the book or not, we will just copy it and paste it as a payload for this particular request. Now if you notice in this particular payload we have got the escape characters like slash r slash n in several places along with slash double quote. These are the escape characters added by the ID automatically for us. Another thing over here is that the ISBN for this particular book has already been added or assigned to the user ID for over here and hence adding the same book will not be possible. Hence we will be adding another book from the list of books that we had over here under the APF get book list which is bookstore v1 books. And here we have couple of books over here. I have selected one of the ISBN value from here and went on to write it in my payload over here as you can see. Thus we will move to the next step which is basically to compose our request and send it to the server. So let's get started with that. Now that we have the request payload our next step will be to basically tell the server of how the payload needs to be interpreted. Since we know that the payload should be, should be interpreted in a application json format let's write that in the header hence we again invoke the request object and we select header in which we specify the content type it 
it will be application JSON. I'll remove this typo. The next step in this direction will be to compose the request and send it to the server. Hence we start again by invoking the request object and then we pass along the request body. In this case the request body will be the payload that we are sending. So let's copy that and paste it. Having done that our next step will be to specify the URI path to which the request should be posted to. Thus we use the post method. In the post URI we should be posting the path which is basically bookstore v1 books. So let us copy that and paste it back in the URI for post. Having done that we have everything basically we need to send the request to the server. We have the body, we have the post URI, we have the necessary headers that we need to send across. The important one being basic authentication header followed by the way in which we want the request body to be interpreted as the return type of the post request will be the response and we will capture it right now in a response object. Let me add the necessary import for it. Now that we have got a response as we can see we had received a status of 201 something similar we are expecting from our response we are getting from the server. Hence we will write the necessary methods for it. The first one being this out because we want to print out the result in our console. Thus response status code is followed by response dot we have the get status method as we have studied previously so let us quickly select that and next we can do is response dot pretty print which is this method everything looks all right to us let us quickly run the test and see if everything is all right and we get the necessary output in the console we run as j unit test the test has run successfully with an output. Let me simply maximize it. We have been successfully able to add the book to the user account and the status response code is as expected 201 which was the same one we received over here in the postman. We had received a 201 and similarly that's the response status code we have received for the rest assured code we wrote as well. As we notice we have received two books over here the one that we added right now and of course the previous existing one that we had already added when we did the postman request. This proves that the code we had written for basic authentication works fine and the response we received is as expected.